Hey! In the previous video, we saw three core features of OpenShift that make cluster management and operations not only easier, but in some regards completely different from what you might be used to. One of those features is the usage of specialized container operating system for every node in the cluster. In case of OKD, the open source OpenShift version, this system is Fedora CoreOS. In the enterprise flavor of OpenShift, Red Hat is using Red Hat CoreOS. Two primary features of this operating system is that it's mutable and its sole purpose is to run containers. This functionality is enabled by two open source technologies. One is called OS3 and another one is called Ignition. OS3 makes your server managed like a set of file system layers and Ignition allows you to customize your server a bit similar to how you would customize it with configuration management tools. If this sounds confusing, then check out a video that I made about both of these tools and Fedora Chorus in general. It will help to better understand what we are about to learn in this video. Both OS3 and Ignition are rather low-level tools. You need a lot of plumbing to make them work for you. Let's see how this plumbing is implemented in OpenShift. I've installed a new cluster for this video, OKD version 4.6. You might notice that cluster statement page looks a bit nicer compared to the previous video. OpenShift cluster is automated and managed by a set of cluster operators, where each operator is responsible for certain parts of the cluster configuration. There are operators for monitoring, logging, networking, and so on. The one that is taking care of configuring the cluster nodes is called machine config. Machine config operator takes care of patching and applying changes to the cluster nodes. I will talk about how it works on high level, but if you want to learn lower level technical details, please tell me in the comments section below. Machine config cluster operators provides us with two new custom resources. We can see both of them in the compute tab on the left. First one is called machine config pool. We can see that there are two config pools out of the box, one for workers and one for masters. Let's check the one for workers. Inside the machine pool, we can see how many machines are part of this pool. Machines are selected based on node labels, which we can see down here. Each pool has a number of associated machine configs, which we can see in the machine configs tab. OpenShift cluster comes with a bunch of machine configs, both for masters and for workers. Let's check the one called 00-worker. Each machine config is basically just a wrapper around ignition configuration, which is then applied to the node. The out-of-the-box machine configs contain critical cluster configuration. If you check the YAML of this one, you will see that it defines things like container storage configuration, cluster CAs, cgroups and network configurations, a number of systemd units, and so on. Even though almost everything in OpenShift cluster runs inside containers, there is still some configuration that needs to be done on the node. All of this configuration is defined and automated here in machine configs. Just to make it a bit easier to digest, let's look at this picture. Every cluster node is part of a machine config pool. The pool defines for which nodes it applies. Each machine config pool has multiple machine configs selected by the label. Each machine config wraps around the ignition configuration. When you change any machine config in the config pool, machine config operator re-renders all the machine configs it has, prepares the final single ignition configuration and does a rolling update of all nodes to match this configuration. The update is done by rebooting every node one by one, even for the smallest changes. That's how OSG works. It needs to build a new file system layer and boot into this layer on the next server restart. Let's do something very common, something that you actually might not do for OpenShift clusters, adding a new authorized SSH key to every worker node. I'm going to click on the plus button over there to import the YAML file. I'm doing it only for demonstration purposes. You must store all of your YAMLs in version control and apply them automatically. Let me paste the new machine config. I'm setting the name to 00 SSH. The numbers in this 
name for the order in which all machine configs of the pool are merged into one another. I'm also setting a label that will help machine config pool to discover this machine config. Finally, inside spec section, I define the core user with my SSH public key. Now let me save it. Right after I save it, machine config operator will pick this machine config up, make it part of the pool, force the pool to re-render the configuration and start applying this new configuration to every Woka node. If we open the machine config pool list, we can see that it's already in updating status. You should be really careful with changing machine configs because each change will result in a rolling restart of every cluster node. If you check the list of the cluster nodes, we will see that the currently updated node has scheduling disabled. OpenShift makes sure that cluster updates are not disruptive to the platform users as much as it can. As you can imagine, your applications must be highly available to survive such updates without downtime. If your application is running only inside a single pod, it will be down because the node where this pod is running will be restarted during the cluster upgrade. If I open the rendered file, then I will see all machine configs of this pool merged together including the newly added SSH key. If we check the status of the pool, you can see that one of the machines is already updated. Let's enter this machine via the built-in terminal and verify that my public key is available inside. My cluster nodes are located in private network and I cannot access them over the internet, but what I can do is to use the browser-based terminal in this OpenShift console. If I check the home directory of the core user, I will find my public key in there. Actually, my key is specified twice. The reason for this is because I also specified the SSH key during the cluster installation. Clearly, Ignition, combined with machine config operator, does not care about its importance. And this is one of the reasons why you should not use this configuration approach too often. If you are thinking that this machine config API is a bit inconvenient and hard to use, then you're right. Ignition is a very minimal configuration management system and it's hard to do any complex configuration with it. The force rolling restart of every node also could be a problem if you run non-HA applications in your cluster. But the whole idea of OpenShift 4 and the container operating systems is that you're not even supposed to do a lot of host level configuration. Everything you run should run in containers. Even the SSH access should be discouraged as much as possible. And OpenShift has all the tools built in to make sure that you don't need to log in to the node unless something is really badly broken. Still, machine config operator is an essential part of the OpenShift cluster and it's an interesting way to automate the inevitable host level configuration of your clusters. Even if you don't use it much, you have to know that it's out there and what it does. That's it for this video. Please tell in comments which other OpenShift topics you would like to see covered in the next video. If you or your company are interested in OpenShift or Kubernetes consulting and training, you can contact us via the email address provided in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the like button. Thanks for watching.